Hello, 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 my good student. Welcome. This is Dr. Sami. I want to take you through a form to concept here under the topic carbon and its compounds. And uh, specifically, I want to teach you a process, an industrial process called Solvay process. And this process is for the manufacture of sodium carbonate, a chemical called sodium carbonate. Now, any industrial process must start with a raw material or some raw materials. So for the Solvay process, I need the following raw materials. A chemical called brine, otherwise this is concentrated sodium chloride. I need to use ammonia gas. I need to use limestone that is specifically mixed with coke. And then I use water. Those are the four main raw materials for the Solvay process. After the raw materials, I want to take you through the seven compartments or the seven chambers that are of interest in Solvay process. The first one is the absorption tower. Later on, we're going to see what exactly happens in the absorption tower. We have another one, another chamber called the Solvay Tower. Other is called the Carbonator, the Carbonator, the second. There is a filter. I need a filter. I need a kiln or just a furnace. And of course, another kiln. There is the first kiln and even the second. We have another chamber or compartment we call the Slaker. And then the ammonia generator. Other is a simple reaction chamber here. So next I'll be telling you what exactly happens in every compartment here. Good. I'm now ready to take you through the entire process step by step. And we are starting with the absorption tower. Anytime you hear of an absorption tower, there must be a gas that is dissolving in a liquid or a solution. So in this case, you have ammonia gas that is being dissolved or being absorbed in brine. So this is where ammonia and brine do mix. So this one, it is where ammonia and brine do mix. What comes out, it is a substance. Remember, this is not a compound. This is a mixture called ammoniacal brine otherwise it's called ammoniated brine a very hot substance you know that mixture results to formation of a very hot substance and that substance now ammoniacal brine is fed into the carbonator other is called the solvay tower remember how the solvay tower is structured we usually say it has the dome shaped baffles it has the dome shaped baffles so it is something that looks like that you know it is something that looks with some dome shaped baffles there and what is the use of the those the, the dome shaped baffles those are for lowering the speed or actually they, they slow down the flow of the ammoniacal brine remember the ammoniacal brine will be fed from the top so it slows down the flow of the ammoniacal brine to give it enough time for reaction. It also spread, or rather it does what we call increasing the surface area for absorption of the other gas. So somewhere in kiln number one, we have limestone. Remember, limestone is calcium carbonate that is mixed with carbon, coke. And uh, the two are being heated in a kiln. What we do specifically is to heat. And when we heat that, calcium carbonate will decompose and calcium oxide will be formed and a gas cal uh, carbon four oxide will also be produced. And it is the carbon four oxide that is fed into the carbonator from somewhere at the bottom. The two substances now do react. We have the ammonia called brine and uh, the carbon four oxide. Later on, we'll be looking at the chemical reactions that specifically takes place in the carbonator. So the two substances react now, and two main substances are being formed, sodium hydrogen carbonate and ammonium chloride. 
Remember I've said this process here generates a lot of heat and therefore the carbonator need constant cooling and that tells you the solvay process should be near a reliable water source because of the cooling the carbonator and water is one of the raw materials as you can remember. Now when the carbonator is constantly cooled the temperature are significantly lowered and therefore sodium hydrogen carbonate will come out in form of a solid and this one will come out in form of a liquid. With that we can separate the two by filtration and that's where we do the filtration. So what comes out, remember this one, you know, I've just allowed you to follow this. This is ammonium chloride that is kept for further use somewhere else. Then we continue with sodium hydrogen carbonate that is taken to a kiln and then it is heated. When sodium hydrogen carbonate is heated, we get sodium carbonate. Remember that is the substance that we are producing or that we want to manufacture. We have it. In the process, carbon follows that will be produced that can easily be recycled, yes, into the carbonator that can be recycled. Water will also be produced and it can also be used within the process. Now, though we have obtained the chemical of interest, we want to make this process very economical. By doing what? By making use of the byproduct. Remember we have ammonium chloride calcium oxide that are yet to be utilized. Any industrial process that is able to minimize on the waste, it's very economical. Now, so far we have heated limestone and maybe I ask you why should I mix it with coke? Because I want to generate enough of carbon for oxide. So coke will also help to increase the amount of carbon for oxide that is being produced. Then after heating a calcium uh, carbonate, I have the quick lime here, the calcium oxide. I need to add water. I need to convert it to select lime. So, and that's why I take it to a slaker. In the slaker, we bring in the water. Remember, we have not used one of our raw material, water. And by doing that, we get calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide, the select lime. This the select lime, now I react it with ammonium chloride. And when I do that, ammonium chloride and calcium hydroxide will react to give me calcium chloride, water, and ammonia. Remember, ammonia is one of the gases that we started with, the raw materials we started with. And with that, this chamber here, we call it ammonia generator because it is there to facilitate regeneration of ammonia gas. Now, that is simply the survey process and I know you can be able to follow what exactly has happened. We've started the absorption chamber, ammoniacal brine produced, fed into a carbonator. Carbonator from the bottom we react or we bring in carbon oxide. Two main substances comes out, sodium hydrogen carbonate, ammonium chloride, taken to a filter where they are separated. Sodium hydrogen carbonate taken to a kiln where it is heated to get sodium carbonate. CO2 is recycled, water is recycled. Then somewhere we heated uh, calcium carbonate and coke to get CO2. But there was a byproduct here, calcium oxide, that is taken to a slaker, adding water. You get select lime, calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide reacted by one of the reagents or the substance from the filter. You get ammonia as one of the product calcium chloride and water. This process is very economical for some few reasons. One, some of the byproducts are being recycled. CO2, ammonia, water being recycled. Uh, look at this, the only waste product from solvay process is calcium chloride. And we cannot term this as a waste because it is a sort of uh, economical benefit. Maybe this can be sold to a sodium extracting company or any other because it's a, a key material thing. Then if you consider what happens in the carbonator, the process produces a lot of heat. So that heat can be harnessed to be used in the kiln. So it is also very economical. Talk to, uh, come to think of sodium carbonate. It is a sort of several uses. Can be used in paper manufacturing industry, can also be used in glass making industry, can be used to soften 
hard water, among other uses. So all of that I want to take you through, it is the chemical reactions taking place in all the chambers because we have a chemical process taking place here, a chemical process here, another one here, another one here, and another one here. I think here there are two. So I want to just write the chemical equations and we will be good to summarize the Solvay process. And here are the main chemical equations uh, for the reactions taking place in the various chambers. Maybe we can start with the carbonator or the Solvay tower. Remember this one is the carbonator, the carbonator. We've said this is where the main reaction is taking place. And there are two steps. There are two steps here. First of all, carbon follows the ammonium water react to form ammonium hydrogen carbonate. Ammonium hydrogen carbonate. Then the ammonium hydrogen carbonate reacts with the brine. And that is how uh, ammonium chloride and sodium hydrogen carbonates are formed. Remember, you can write it as one. It is the four reagent, carbon monoxide, ammonia, water, and sodium chloride reacting to give you ammonium chloride and sodium hydrogen carbonate. Then we go to the kiln number two, where we are heating the sodium hydrogen carbonate. When sodium hydrogen carbonate is heated, we get sodium carbonate, CO2, and water. And that is it. And this is heat. That is thermal decomposition of sodium hydrogen carbonate. And kiln number two, this kiln number, number one, where now we are heating calcium uh, carbonate, that is limestone. Limestone will decompose to get calcium oxide and carbon four oxide. In the same chamber, kiln number one, you have carbon reacting, coke, coke is carbon, reacting with oxygen to give you more carbon four oxide. Inside the slaker, calcium oxide is reacting with water to form slaked lime, calcium hydroxide. Then ammonia generator, this is where we are regenerating ammonia, otherwise it's uh, the reaction chamber. Select line, calcium hydroxide, reacts with ammonium chloride from the filter. Then you get calcium chloride, ammonia and water. That is basically what happens in the Solvay tower or rather in the Solvay process. Thank you so much. This is just but one of the industrial processes we cover in high school. Later on, I'll be doing others, Harbour process, contact process, Ostwart's process, so talk about fresh process among others. Maybe a question that will come, maybe or maybe not. Any other industry that can be located near the survey process. We can have the water treatment plant, maybe that uses the final product for this sodium carbonate. You can have the harbor process that manufactures ammonia and then they will sell to the uh, survey people. You can have maybe a plant like the one for so sodium extracting process because calcium chloride is used to lower the melting point of sodium chloride in the extraction of sodium, among others. So this is a good question. It can be a paper two question giving you some good marks there. Thank you. Thank you for following my lesson. And uh, finally, welcome to this uh, segment of a nutshell of CBC the new system of education in Kenya that was started in the year 2015 and now we are talking about the year 2023 that is next year the year will be having the first class of junior secondary school that is uh, grade 7. In my previous uh, upload of Nutshell of CBC I just listed down some core values that are uh, coming together with the CBC, that are brought about by CBC. Now, for this one specifically, I want to talk about science. What exactly will happen? With the grade seven, there will be a branch of science now that will be, they will be doing called the integrated science. Remember, this one will be a foundation towards what we call STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in a senior secondary. Now, 
uh, as you can go through this, you can see the essence statement. Why should integrated science be taught in JSS? Uh, you can see the, the, the evidence there or other the supporting statements there, why it should be taught. If you talk about the session of papers, they are there. Yes, we are talking or we are asking why should the integrated science be taught and what is its importance. So you can see the essence statement. Uh, is you, you can go through it, just pause the video and try to read why exactly should this learner be taught uh, integrated science. Uh, maybe we emphasize with the last statement there, how the integrated science will be taught. They are calling it five E's. The engagement, that means the student will be engaged. The exploration, or exploration student will be allowed to explore. Explanation, yes, but from the uh, educator or uh, what we call it now, the, not, not the tutor as such, but the instructor. The collaboration and even evaluation. As I have said, the, the very second last point here, this integrated science will be to prepare the student for STEM, the science technology engineering and mathematics there uh if we can go through the outcome the expected outcomes in the integrated science the student will be expected to acquire scientific knowledge skills values attitudes that will help the student to make informed decisions especially on the career pathway in the senior secondary now the student will be able to select improvise and safely use basic scientific tools and apparatus materials be it chemicals effectively even in our day-to-day -day life explore, manipulate, manage, and even conserve the, conserve the environment for the learning and for and the, what we call the sustainable development. Then the student will be able to practice relevant hygiene, sanitation, nutrition, uh, skills that promote good health. Um, maybe outcome number five, this is what we're calling the objective previously. The student will be able to apply the understanding of the body system that is now in biology, like that also we are calling biology, with a view to promote and maintain good health. Develop the capacity for scientific inquiry and problem solving in our day-to-day -day life or in different situations. Then the students will be able to appreciate and use scientific principles and practice in our everyday life. Then apply the scientific skills and knowledge in everyday life. Maybe those are just but few, eight expected outcomes or what previously we're calling objectives of the integrated uh, science. Thank you and thank you, thank you so much.